All right. So we won't waste anybody else's time here. I'm sure a couple more people continue to pour in, but we've got some housekeeping to go over really quick. So we'll jump through that quick and then we'll get on to the uh, the show, we'll call it. So first couple of housekeeping things I want to cover quickly are, uh, well, first off, thank you to everybody for joining us tonight. We're super excited. This uh, masterclass program has been rolling pretty pretty well for us, and we're super excited to continue to bring exciting classes. Um, I do have a little bit of news here coming up on next month's classes, so we'll get to that here in a second. But uh, first, to start with the housekeeping, uh, happy Giving Tuesday to everybody. I'm sure you've all uh, likely seen on social media or in your email inboxes already. It is uh, Giving Tuesday. Uh, we are proud to uh, not only have donated directly to TU uh, and uh participating in their matching gift challenge, uh, turning $5,000 into $15,000, uh, but we are also donating 10% of today's profits on new memberships directly to TU. Uh, so if you haven't signed up to be a pro member yet, today is a great day to do so while donating directly at the same time. So super awesome. We're super excited to be uh, partnering with Trout Unlimited for that. Um, so if you uh, are already a pro member, don't forget that you can still donate directly to TU to participate in that match challenge uh, that ends tonight. So get those uh, donations in either during the class or right after. Uh, next thing, uh, the indicator, make sure you uh, keep your eyes on your inboxes. We've got our monthly indicator drop in uh, this Friday or Saturday. Um, so definitely keep an uh, eye on the inbox there. We've got some really cool stuff that we'll be announcing, uh, like our gifting. Uh, we are going to be having a really exciting gifting program this winter, uh, where you will be able to either purchase digital or physical uh, memberships to be able to gift to friends, family, whoever it may be that you're looking to gift things to this holiday season. Uh, we also are going to be announcing that we'll be having two master classes coming to you in December. So for the last few months, we've only had one class a month. Uh, and for the next couple months, we are excited to be bringing you to uh, uh, two classes a month. So make sure you keep an eye out for those classes. Uh, we will uh, hopefully have those solidified by the time the indicator comes out. Um, also, just make sure uh, everybody knows we are recording this class and the class will be uh, live on our YouTube uh, tomorrow, probably mid morning or so. Um, and as I think Jeremy just answered in the uh, questions already there, that's a great way to refer back to previous classes. Head over to the uh, Trout Routes YouTube channel, and you can quickly and easily find those in a playlist or just in our recent uploads as well. Uh, so make sure you can send those to your friends. Like I said, refer back to them yourself, whatever you might need. Um, and then right before we get into things here, I want to make sure to let everybody in the class currently know, don't hesitate to drop those questions in. I see we already had uh, Ken drop that one in there. So don't hesitate to drop questions in. We'll try to either answer them right away or we'll kind of bank them for the end of class and uh, get to them at that time. So don't hesitate to drop those questions in throughout the class, though. So without further ado, I want to reintroduce or introduce, depending on if you've joined us for classes or not before, our lead GIS specialist, Jeremy. Uh, he actually, you know, he, he used to be based here in Minnesota with us, but just within the last week and a half or so, he uh, ditched us down to New Mexico for some pretty exciting opportunities down there. So I'll let him uh, maybe explain a little bit more before we get started here. But without any uh, further introduction, Jeremy, take us away. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, for those who aren't uh, familiar with what GIS is, that's my job. I'm a GIS specialist. And so that's pretty much any data that it has a physical location. And so for trout routes, that's, you know, where the rivers are, which rivers have trout, where the access points are, um, you know, where the public land is. I'm bringing all that together and putting it on our maps. Um, and yeah, so I used to live in Minneapolis with the rest of the crew, but my wife got a job down here in New Mexico. And so we made the jump. And I was bummed to leave the Trout Routes headquarters, but there is some great trout water in New Mexico. So we thought this would be just a good opportunity for a different spin on showing you guys some of the tools that we put together for exploring uh, new trout waters, because I'm I'm in that boat and I'm exploring a completely new state to me. I fished a little bit in Colorado, but New Mexico is is totally brand new to me. And, right. Uh, it couldn't be, the, couldn't be a better uh, better timing on this one, eh, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, it's it's too bad I showed up in November right before everything gets cold. <laughs> yeah. Already been fighting some ice on the streams. Um, but for those of you that have been with us for some other master classes, um, this one might not get into as many details as we have before. This is going to be just kind of an overview on some of the new tools that we've uh, that we've come up with, and then how you use some of our existing tools to explore a new state. And uh, as Matt said, yeah, please ask any questions as they come up. Um, Matt, if they're if they're pertinent to what we're talking about in the moment, please interrupt me. 
Uh, if they're general questions, we can save those for the end and we'll get to them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen here for what I'm looking at, trout routes. And most of this will apply to Trout Routes Pro version. If you're on the basic version, you'll see some of these features, um, but most of them are in our Pro. So when you open up Trout Routes, well, first, you seen everything? Sweet. Um, when you open up Trout Routes, you're probably gonna see something like this. If you, if you went to New Mexico, it's gonna open up in the guide mode and in our uh, roadmap layer. If you're looking at, if you want to change, you know, the base layers here, we have topography, which is just showing you topo lines, satellite, if you want to see that imagery. I do like satellite, but um, just as we start here, it's a little bit easier to see what we're talking about just in the regular roadmap. Um, the first thing I did when I got here, um, I just had one day to fish in the weekend. I got here at 4 a.m. on Sunday and wanted to get out quick. And so, you know, I just like to see what are the best waters around me. And there's a few ways to do those, do that in trout routes. Um, we do rank our streams gold class one two and three gold being like your blue ribbon waters class twos and threes being smaller stuff maybe less productive maybe hard to get to um, so to see just you know what's the top couple of waters in the state uh, you can use our filter settings and on desktop that'll be over here in the left map filters um, on your phone that'll be on those bottom menu layers um, and also for the for the first part of this i'll be doing everything on desktop and then we'll jump over to what it would look like on an iphone Looking in New Mexico, when I do that, you'll see three rivers pop out at you. Um, we have this one right here. Looks like it's a tailwater, um, Rio Chama, and that comes out of, looks like a pretty large reservoir. Um, so that's gonna be probably one of the most productive areas in the state, or at least in this area. Another one coming out, those of you who fish this part of the state, that's the San Juan tailwater, obviously another really great place to try. And then over here on the east side, looks like we have the Cimarron. So that's another uh, tailwater coming out of Eagle's Nest Lake. Um, so that'll just help you locate those first couple of really productive fisheries. Um, those might be the most popular though. And you'll see if you, if you did wanna find the most popular fisheries in the area, we do have a filter for that too. And that's just based off of, you know, do we see these rivers come up in books quite frequently? Do we see them come up on the internet? Some people like to use this to find where to fish. Some people like to use this to find where to avoid if you want to get, you know, have a stream to yourself. Um, but this will pull up with those top waters and then a few others. I mean, we have the Rio Grande um, coming right down through here to the south. And then it looks like we have the Cimarron, not just the gold water section, but some of those lower waters as well. Another thing I like to do just to kind of get a sense of the area, I'm looking at it right now. You, know, you can tell there's some mountains around, but to know really know what kind of terrain you're getting into, um, I like to turn on that 3D mode and just kind of fly around some of those main rivers to see um, what that terrain is going to look like. And this is on desktop currently. If I hit the right button here, zoom out. And it is going to be coming to iOS soon. Um, hopefully in quarter one of next year, we'll be making that update so you'll be able to play around with this on your phone too. But if you had pulled up to a few of these areas without going into 3D or looking at the topography and think I'm just gonna hike to this access point, it'll be nice and easy. You'd be in for a pretty good surprise. Um, so that's something I always recommend you do before you get it on the river. Um, just a little, little sense of what the river is gonna be like. Um, or you know, if you're looking at some of your, some of your more mountainous areas, um, we can look at the Castilla tailwater here. And although it is steep, you can tell that the river does follow maybe a more accessible river valley. Um, so give you a little better sense of what you're getting into there. Um, another thing, you know, that you probably should do, I'm not going to announce my current location on the internet, but let's say, you know, I live in Santa Fe and I want to get a sense of how close are some of these fisheries to where I'm at. Um, you can find really any access point on the map. So let's say, you know, I'm going to fish, what is this, Pecos River, and I want to know how long that's going to take me to get there from Santa Fe. Hit directions, that's going to pop open Google Maps for you, and you can route right there. If you're on your iPhone, you can also uh, designate to have this open Apple Maps if you like Apple. Looks like we got a question. Uh, is 3D on desktop only? Yep, that's on desktop for now. Um, iOS, we're hoping to have that up and running um, early in quarter one, so January, February, um, ideally. And then Android will probably be a month or two after that. So we're rolling stuff out on Apple and then Android will be falling. So at least by the warm season next year, for sure. You don't even need me. You're monitoring questions, leading the class. I, all right, I'll, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> on it. 
Um, another thing I like to do too, it's it's a little easier, I guess, to find public waters here in the West. Um, you can turn off that popular filters there so we can see all our rivers. Um, but where I'm from, you know, there's a lot less public water. It's You're relying a lot on easements. To see what is public, you can go over here to our public access mode. We'll turn on roads again. It'll really make that pop. And if I just want to find, you know, where is some really close public water to Santa Fe, it's going to pop in purple everything that is, you know, entirely within public land, whether that's, you know, a state park, state uh, state forest, national forest, um, even city parks, it's going to color that purple or fishing easements too. So, I mean, you can see even here in downtown Santa Fe, you're going to see those public areas pop in purple. Once you kind of get a, a feel for the state in general, you know, what kind of terrain you're going to be dealing with, um, then you can get into some of our more, our more curated local information. Um, the first thing I always check is regulations and you know, just see like, is this a pretty easy state to fish um, like Minnesota or is it, you know, I know a lot of states are heavily, heavily regulated. Uh, we do have a map mode for regulations. Pop that up here and you'll start to see the colors change of the rivers. If I go back to guide, guide's going to show those classifications. In your regu regulations, you're going to see some different colors. And the long way to figure out what those mean is just to click on a river with different colors. And you'll see here, it's got special regs. It's a red chili stream. Side note, that's a pretty pretty fun way that New Mexico designates the regulations. We love our chili down here. Um, so the, the protected streams will be red chili. Some others are green chili, then we have Christmas chili. Um, but if you open up the map legend as well, um, that will pop open what those different colors mean. And that will change too as you go from state to state. It's not just for New Mexico. If you go into Colorado, you'll see um, you know, gold medal, special, special species, close to fishing. Um, all that is in there. Where we can, we do incorporate very specific regs to streams um, for that state. So if we click on San Antonio Creek here in the Valles Caldera, you'll see it's a green chili stream. That means you can keep two trout of any length, artificial lure or fly with a single barbless hook. So we do incorporate that where we can as well. Looks like we got a few questions. We'll get to those. It looks like Matt's getting to those right now. Um, as well for or for other local information, um, something that you always got to do. We always recommend it. We're always pushing for it. Stop in your local fly shop. Ask them what's going on with the rivers. Um, we do have those on trout routes as well. Um, on the desktop version, when you click on a fly shop, you'll see the address. You can get directions same way as you can with access points. It'll open up Google or Apple Maps. This will take you to the website. And then if you're clicking on your phone too, we have every phone number in there. So you can call the shop, um, ask you know for stream reports, ask where to go. Your answers will vary. I don't know if they'll tell you all their hot spots, but um, something you should always do. And then once you kind of have your, your spot picked out, um, one way to tell you know, what the rivers are doing in trout routes, we do have every USGS stream gauge loaded into the map. Those are gonna be these icons right here. Click on them. Oh, I clicked on the bridge there. Open charts, and you'll see what the river flows are doing. And so this is, you know, not only valuable for current conditions, but it can also give you a sense as it's a huge river like the Rio Grande, or is it a really small tributary too? Um, and it looks like the Rio Grande down here is flowing at looks like 480 right now. So that be, might be a little more fishable than when it was up here at 1500. Get out of that there. Um, let's see. Ah, yeah, and then another way, really good way to see what kind of river you're dealing with, something that I'd, I love playing around with. Um, Matt can attest I get distracted in the office using this tool, um, but we added street view as well. So if you click on a river, this one might be crowded by the access point, but if you see an orange dot, that's any bridge where the Google Street View car has driven over and we've linked that in chart routes as well. So if you want to see what the river actually looks like, you can click on that find the river in street view and see, well, this might be a good trout stream, but it's about a foot wide. And so that can help you plan for what kind of flies to bring. You might not even need waders here that can give you a little bit better sense um, of what you're going to encounter versus, you know, if you went back to the Rio Grande, it's going to be an entirely different story. And that'll just give you a really good way to find, you know, what you're walking into. Um, access points for rivers on the app. I'll cover that in a minute. We'll hop over to iOS here soon. Um, awesome. One more the first question here, Jeremy was uh, he was he was asking if uh, all this data is available for offline use. Great question. Yep, everything is available on trout routes for offline use. You can download the maps. 
um, just like you can in a lot of other other mapping applications. Um, have that on your phone. And yeah, even if you don't have service, it'll still work with the GPS in your phone. You'll be able to see where you are. All the access data will be there as well. Um, so One I, thing to I remember with that is to uh, when you download those maps offline, the base layer that you have selected when you go to download those maps will be the base layer, the only base layer that's available when you try to use those offline then. So make sure when you are downloading those maps offline that you download them with that base layer that you'll want when you're out on the uh, water with no service. Great point. Yep. Yeah. If you want to be able to see satellite, see if you have to cross a scree field to get to this creek. Yeah, definitely make sure it's in satellite mode when you're downloading. Um, one more tool that I really like to show people, it's it's pretty unique to trout routes. Um, it's a good way to get a feel for the river um, is our elevation charts. And so we've actually gone through and created our own proprietary set of elevation charts for every river in the country. And what this allows you to do is see the gradient of the stream over its course. And so for this particular river, it's the East Fork of the Jemez River. You can see while it's um, up in this area, for those who aren't familiar with New Mexico, it's, it's called the Valles Caldera National Preserve. It's, it's this big caldera. It's like a crater. Um, big flat area up in the mountains. And you can actually see that here. And you, you know, would could interpret from this chart that this is going to be kind of a pretty low gradient meadow stream. And then you can see exactly where it starts dropping off out of the mountains. You're going to get more into that pocket water, maybe, um, maybe a little bit more rapids. And so if you're looking for that, you know, high alpine meadow, nice meandering stream, you can identify that with our with our elevation charts too. And all of that will work too. Um, in the iOS version, which we can switch over to here. Um, might take me a second to get this to share. Sounds okay. good, Boris. I can answer a couple quick questions here. So we had a question here come in from Dale. Uh, Dale asked, do you need a separate app for each state? No, Dale. One of the great things about Trout Routes is that we uh, take a lot of that information that usually as anglers, we have to go to multiple different websites, multiple different resources, whatever it might be. And we harness all of that into one app and you can access all of the information on the entire lower 48 within the app on your iPhone, your iPad, uh, Android, or on the web uh, version as well. So uh, you don't need a separate app for each state. That pro membership will get you access to all that lower 48, as well as the basic just won't get you as much information. And then Blair, uh, will the recording be available? Yes, uh, we are. We Again, we've got all of our recordings available over on our YouTube uh, channel, Trout Routes. Just type that in on YouTube. You can find it. We've got all of our recordings under a playlist, as well as right there in our uh, recent uploads. Super easy to find as well. So, And then Mark asked, uh, let's see here, the map tools, create marker, create line, uh, create area on the screen. Can this feature be turned off or minimized? Um, I think he's asking in terms of the space that it takes up on the screen. Um, uh, to that mark, not as of currently, we don't have any um, capabilities to minimize or change the size of that kind of uh, toolbar there. Uh, it's a great thought, though. I, we can, we'll definitely pass that along to our development team. I have a feeling he might be uh, somewhere in the, the uh the viewership here, so he might even be uh, listening to this right now. So definitely a, a great idea and appreciate you putting that out there. Uh, Ken, let's see here. We'll have a booth at the Denver fly fishing show in January. We sure will. We are super excited. I think we'll probably have the majority of the team there as that's one of the bigger shows and one of the more exciting shows for us as a team in the year. Um, so we will definitely be there uh, and we'll be there probably in full force. So looking, looking forward to seeing you there. All right, I can pick it back up. Finally got this to share. Just had to you know, manage my cords over here. Um, let's see, someone asked if you could find access points within the app. You sure can. Um, so if we're going to pick this river right here, it looks like it's the Rio Grande again. Not spot burning, just want to pick big rivers that everyone knows here. Um, the access points that you're going to want to look for for fishing access are going to be these right here. That's our fishing access marker. So just look for those anywhere on the map. That's going to be somewhere that's on public land or an easement. Um, and it's going to be, you know, at least moderately accessible from a road or trail. Um, for some states, we've been able to get really good data um, on you know, what you're going to find there. So for this one, for example, you know, good shoreline access with small boat launch um, linked to the New Mexico state uh, website. And then they also have species data as well that we were able to incorporate, uh, which has been really helpful. Um, and so some of those uh, mobile specific tools that I want to showcase, uh, something we worked on 
uh, worked really hard on this fall is our new river miles tool. So if you select a river and let's say you wanted to float from this access point to down here, you click this little ruler icon um, under the compass in the upper right hand corner. Tap on the river. That's your starting point. Tap back down here and that's going to give you a really easy way to measure. That's going to be an eight and a quarter mile float roughly. So yeah, you could probably do that in a day. Um, another thing that we've added to, we get a lot of questions from folks on how to use trout routes. You know, we pack a ton of information in here and sometimes it can be pretty overwhelming. Under that ruler tool, it looks like there's a little book. Click on that. And now we do have uh, in-app tutorials. So if you want to know, you know how you use the guide mode, you can click that tutorial and that's going to walk you through um, step by step, show you some of those really cool tools we have. Um, new to trout routes, again, I mentioned some stuff will be coming in quarter one, hopefully of um, 2024. We're going to upgrade our stream cards and add some really neat tools there too. Um, here's just, these are all screenshots as we're, we're still working on this. It's still in beta, um, but we're going to upgrade our elevation charts, give you a little bit more uh, geographic information on that. You know, how high is the stream? How much is it actually dropping over its course? What's the average slope? Um, give you more information, like where are the nearby fly shops, um, and then curate those gauges for you as well. So you can see which gauges are on the river, which gauges are in the watershed. And we're also going to show you, you know, what these st state specific access laws are, because um, it does vary state to state, you know, in the Midwest where I grew up, um, any uh, river that if you can access it from a public spot, you can walk in it. I know not every state is like that. Um, so we'll show you state by state, what you can do, what you can't do did see a uh, question about how you measure again. Go back to my app here. Uh, really quick, go over that again. That would be awesome. Tyler asked to uh, just show that feature real quick again. That's a awesome one that I know everybody is going to want to make sure that they uh, know how to use and know how to take advantage of. Yeah. Yep. So to do that, uh, Tyler, you're going to click the ruler button, which is in the upper right-hand corner under that arrow above the book. So you'll just click that, tap a point on the stream, and then tap the next point that you want to measure to. Um, so that is live in iOS right now. We're working on getting it out for Android as well. So keep an eye on that. Um, and then you can also, um, if you wanted to measure you know, something else, you're not looking at the river, um, you can create a line too. So just drop a line, drop points wherever you want, and you'll see uh, in the bottom right-hand corner there, there's a little distance calculator too. So if you want to, you know, plot out the trail that you're going to take from your car and see how far that is. Yeah, that about wraps up how I would explore a new state and trail routes. Matt, any any tips you'd like to share with the folks? You know, no, I think you've you've really covered it. You know, I think when I am explore, you know, with all the the traveling we've been able to do this past year, when I've been kind of exploring some of those areas, I think my favorite one to uh, to use has kind of been that the filters of being able to choose the classes. Personally, I don't love going uh, to streams that everybody else is on. So I definitely use that popular one. As you said, you can kind of use it one of two ways, right? Finding streams that you want to fish or finding streams that you want to avoid. So I use those. So I think a lot of those tools have been really awesome. One thing that I need to take away from what you said is using that 3D feature more. I mean, I would have showed up to that gorge ready to jump on in and uh, not realize that it was a uh, jump down into the river, right? So definitely oh, need to uh, put that one to use more. <laughs> I showed up there and was not ready for the 800 foot drop, so. Awesome. Well, it looks like we've got a couple questions coming in. Please don't uh, hesitate to continue dropping those in. We'd love to continue uh, jumping into a few here. Um, Susan says, I would like to upgrade to Pro. Uh, she said she thinks it's 30% off right now. Um, right now, we uh, we did have our 30% off sale. That has ended. That was our Black Friday sale. Susan, I'll reach out to you and make sure we can get you uh, one of our uh, partner discounts that we can uh, definitely get you some sort of discount off of that membership there. So uh, I'll make sure to uh, grab your email and we can get that from you uh, and get that to you separately. So thank you for that question. Um, Frankie, we appreciate the uh, the thoughts there. Uh, 
we we realized this was kind of a lot of information and uh you know we we realized that trout routes sometimes is a lot to digest especially for new users so definitely recommend going back to some of those uh older uh videos uh, and kind of going through those one of the nice things about the youtube recordings is that you can kind of scrub back and go back and rewatch things uh, so definitely don't hesitate to do that and take advantage of the recordings awesome kathleen uh asked if we will be including lakes sometime. You want to jump into that one, Jeremy? Yes. Thank you, Kathleen. Totally forgot to talk about lakes. We have now included lakes and trout routes. Um, and so right now that's accessible on iOS. Again, that will be coming for Android soon. I was super excited about this one. Love fishing lakes. To turn that on, uh, you're going to go into your filters and scroll down under the access points and you'll see trout lakes. And so they're going to show up as blue dots. Um, I realize we have a lot of dots in here. So if you want to focus on lakes, you can turn off some of those other access points. And you're going to find, um, like right here, for example, here's a blue dot. Looks like Fawn Lakes, New Mexico. And then we've included as much data as we can, too. So they've put rainbow trout in there, good shoreline access. Um, and we have finished that for um, the lower 48 states. So you'll be able to find trout lakes you know, all over the place. Great question. Um, I can answer the next one too, Matt, on uh, current New Mexico access laws. Great. Um, yes. So uh, to do the access laws, we were working with backcountry hunters and anglers. They did a really great study um, on what the state laws are um, between states. And I believe in New Mexico, they just flipped the ruling that you can wade in water that's publicly accessible from a point. Um, but I have also heard from folks around here that not all landowners agree. So... Uh, you're on your own there. Please be careful. Always respect private landowner rights. And if someone, you know, threatens you, just leave. Yeah, a fish isn't worth that kind of fight. Hey. Uh, cool. Next one. Let's jump into uh, why and how you would use the create area feature. That's a great question. Yep. Um, so how I can answer how you would use it. Um, I have not personally used it, but, you know, let's say you're showing someone an area you're blue lining and you want to go to this portion of the county, you're going to explore these couple streams. Um, you would do something like this, click create, new shape, and just add points that would be like the vertices of that area. So just a way to outline a, a portion of the map. You can save that and then send that outline to someone and say, you know, hey, I'm going to be somewhere in this cluster of streams or this area. Yeah. And I, you know, I'll, I'll say for myself personally, um, I've used that create area to kind of cross utilize uh, my maps for things outside of just uh, trout. So I've got an area in Wisconsin uh, that I've got kind of highlighted as some good bass water in that area. So, you know, just one one uh, way to not have to leave the app to go do other things. I've got those areas right created within there as well. So kind of gives a, a lot of different utilization there. So definitely a lot of different ways to use it. Uh, one of the other cool things, Jeremy, if you want to jump back into that, is that you can change the uh, the colors, you can change the line style. There's a lot of uh, customization that you can do within the, that area creation, which is super cool as well. So you can change that fill opacity. So again, yeah, just a lot of different things that you can change. So really cool customization within that uh, creating areas. Awesome. Charles asked, uh, Jeremy, this is probably a great question for you. Uh, he's asking uh, where is or if there is the uh, most popular filter on the Android version? Yep. So I, I apologize. I don't have an Android um, in front of me at the moment. I believe it will be under special filters, um, but I can get back to you on that too. Got to pull out that phone. Awesome. I think there's one over... I'm going to go see if this one's uh, charged over here. I'll be right back. If you want to keep moving through those questions there, Jeremy. Yeah. Looks like we have a question on, is there any way to see whether a river has been stocked recently or a stocking schedule? Um, so we don't necessarily have timings of stockings yet. Um, what we do have, we do have points where if states share where they stock, we have incorporated those. Um, so I know like Montana is a big stocking state. So we can go up there. Um, and you'll be looking for, let's see if we can find one. It's going to be this little fish. It looks like it's dropping in the river. And so that's going to be a stocking point. Um, we would like to incorporate some of those stocking schedules in the future um, because I know that is that is a really valuable piece of data in some states. 
Um, right now, our GIS team is pretty small, um, so that's that's outside of our capacity, but hopefully that will be coming uh, soon. Awesome. Uh, Jeremy, can you really quickly one more time go over how to uh, turn on those lakes again and uh, kind of clicking into one of those lakes and just kind of a brief overview of the information that you get from those? Yep. Yeah, let's give another state some love here. Let's say we're in the Wind River of Wyoming. Um, to turn those lakes on, you would scroll down uh, into the filter. So you'd be in the filter menu uh, and you'd be looking at, there's all these access points here and you look for trout lakes and you just wanna make sure that trout lakes, trout lakes is checked. Um, if you haven't updated your app recently, like in the last couple of months, you might not see this. So just make sure your app is updated. Once you check those and you zoom into an area, you'll see a ton of dots. Just Wyoming a couple, just a couple trout lakes within there, hey? <laughs> and then you click on those, get some information. Looks like this lake has cutthroat, Yellowstone cutthroat. Oh, clicked on the parcel there. Um, yeah, so you can just bounce around and see what those lakes are. Awesome. Next one, uh, can you go over the uh, how to use the public lands filter and some of the information that you can get when you click into those public lands themselves? Mm -hmm. So, yep, if you wanted to you know, really have those public uh, portions of stream pop, um, I find it easiest to use the road or the topo layers just because then you're not dealing with that satellite noise. And you'd go into the access mode here. And so that's oh, a little trouble there. And so that's going to pop out those areas that are public. Um, and currently, I think I have easements checked too. So it's only going to select those ones that are easements. Um, but that'll highlight everything in purple. And then so you asked about how you would know like what those parcels are. Um, in iOS right now, you can click on any parcel and see what that is. Looks like this is just local land. This will probably be national forest. Got to make sure I'm clicking the parcel and not a river there. Yep, Shoshone National Forest. Um, and we are working on that on web as well. So you can actually see what those underlying parcels are. Awesome. Now we've got a question here from Mike uh, asking if there's an app version for iOS. There sure is, Mike. Uh, jump on into the app store there. Quick search for Trout Routes. We'll uh, bring up the app and you'll be able to download that. And you'll be able to use that same login that you've uh, created to utilize the web version. Uh, you'll be able to use that same login on the app to log into your account there. So real quick and easy, uh, super easy to find within the app store there. Awesome. We've got another user asking, uh, does Montana stock their rivers? Uh, he's, he's, the user said that uh, they thought they don't unless they have a self-sustaining wild uh, trout population. Uh, Montana does stock some of the rivers, like like you said, especially, you know, put and take fisheries. Um, and then what we've done here, too, we've actually put in some historical stocking points for Montana. Um, so, you know, if if you want to know them, I'm probably going to encounter brookies in this watershed. You'd be able to see if they've stocked them there in the past. Um, and then some of those stocking points also do apply to the lakes, too. So you can see which of those lakes have had had fish put in them. Um, yeah, good question. Awesome. Next question uh, from Alan asking how to update the app. Uh, so depending on what type of device you've got, uh, a really quick and easy way to manually update the app is to go into whatever uh, app store that uh, you use and uh, manually, if you search Trout Routes, uh, where it usually says, uh, asks you to download an app, it should uh, bring up the update there if there is an update uh, needed for the app at that point. So uh, that should be a quick, easy way uh, to update your app. Awesome. Well, if we don't have any other uh, final questions, uh, I know this was a, a little bit shorter of a class, but we were really excited about bringing this one to you. Again, it was kind of uh, time timely with Jeremy uh, just recently moving to New Mexico and really putting the app to use and uh, kind of finding those uh, best tools that have uh, helped him be successful. I know, Jeremy, you've, you, things have started to freeze over a little bit, you, but you found su some success. You've gotten into a, a few browns and things out there already, right? Yep. Yeah. I've been fishing the higher elevations, but those are starting to ice up. So it's time to go low. There we go. Right on. 
Awesome. Uh, Mike, we got a question here from Mike. Uh, he's only used the iPhone version up until now. How can he get this on his Mac? So there isn't a downloadable version of the app on the computer. You'll be able to just go to, uh, you can head to our website and up in the corner, you'll see the uh, maps or the login button up in the uh, right-hand corner and you can click that. Otherwise, uh, maps.troutroutes.com, I believe is the uh, direct link to get to those maps. So uh, super easy to find there as well. And something I just like to throw out too, um, you know, as as a GIS guy, please reach out to us uh, if you see things that you, you know, think are erroneous, or if you have tips or suggestions for us. We're always trying to get better. We're just a bunch of people who love the fish too, and we want to see see you all as anglers and see the trout thrive. So yeah, please please reach out if you have any suggestions or or you know things you know if, if we're missing a river, for example, just throw it our way. Um, at our support email, we'll get to that. That'll come straight to us. Awesome. We do have a couple quick questions that did come in. Somebody's asking, what are all those stars on your screen there, Jeremy? All those stars on my screen, I shouldn't be showing. Those are my spots. <laughs> so can you explain a little bit about what, how, how you create those, what those are, what those are used for? Kind of, uh, I know you don't want to necessarily hotspot yourself, but if you could just yeah. show the function, that'd be great. <laughs> those are hunting spots for the record. There's no trout there. Uh, but uh, yeah, so those those are our waypoints um, in trout routes. And we just recently, uh, Matt was working super hard on getting those new points and icons um, up. And so if you wanted to create a new icon, let's say you're fishing here um, in Utah, you create new marker, decide where you want to drop that. And then, you know, if you want a star, that's just, you know, generic favorite spot, you can make it a note, access, say there is some TU work or you're working with your local chapter. You just work there, mark that, send it to us. We'll put it on the map too, but parking, trailheads, lakes. And then you can also add photos in there. So if you want to use this as a fish log, uh, you can do that. You can also add photos just under the river in general, add notes. Yep. Awesome. Uh, another question coming in asking if we can uh, use the street view function again. Another really awesome tool that I know people want to make sure that they know how to use uh, down pat. Yeah. So to use Street View, you'd click on a river and you'd look for one of these orange dots. That's going to be a bridge, again, that the Google Street Car has driven over um, and taken pictures. So you'd click on that dot, click Street View, and that's going to open up uh, that Google Street View. So you'd be able to see you know, what the river looks like. Um, we can't control image quality, unfortunately. That's on Google. So if it's a grainy picture, blame them. Um, but this does give you a really good uh, snapshot of what you're looking at. It looks like there's even... I was going to say, is there even somebody fishing in that photo? What a great one to choose. Not planned at all. <laughs> How about that? How about that? That must be a good, that must be a good bridge to jump in at, I guess, eh? As long as it's public. Awesome. Let's see here. Um, can you easily create a marker from your current location? Um, yes, I believe, I believe you can. Yeah, fine. I'll show my current location. I'm somewhere here. In <laughs> I was going to say, man, people are really, they just want to know where you're at. <laughs> um, so what I would do, so you're going to see a little blue dot where you're at, and then you just click and hold on your dot. That was close. And then you create that icon. Just click create right there. That dropped the dot. Try not to show my house. And uh, you get your icon. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, and then can you quickly show Jeremy on the uh, app there how to uh, check your subscription status? I know you can obviously see up in your right-hand corner there that you're a pro member. Um, and if you aren't a pro member, it'll have kind of a gray box there that'll say basic. Um, but can you also jump into that kind of the left hand, uh, left side menu there and kind of show the renewal date and everything like that? Yep. Yes. As Matt said, it's in the upper left-hand corner. It's these, these three bars. You'll click on that and you'll see, you know, your name, your account, when you've been a member. And then you just click my account and you'll see, you know, I'm a pro when you started account type premium. Um, and if you have any issues with that, just reach out to us. Um, you know, we as the developers are also the customer support. So um, we'll be able to help you with anything that comes up. If you want us to check, send it our way and we'll look at it. Awesome. Um, as I'm kind of reading through some of the other questions here, can you just quickly go over the 3D feature again on the desktop? Yep. Yeah. I'll pop over. Start sharing my computer again.
So to access 3D, um, you can do it in any of the map modes. I just personally like satellite um, for 3D. And you would you know, just look at whatever you want to see 3D. Click 3D. And then to, oh, I turned it off. To toggle or like to, you know, fly around with in 3D, um, you would just click the like right and left click on your mouse. Be able to fly around and see what that train looks like. I love it. It's super distracting when I'm when I'm trying to map rivers, but it's really fun to play with. All right. Did I lose you, Matt? Nope. I'm just trying to answer a couple questions here. I apologize about that. Looks like we've got one here, Jeremy. Um, how do you determine public versus private sections of a river um, just by county map data? He's looking, for example, at a well-known river in Pennsylvania that shows no public access. However, it is public publicly accessed all along its full stretch. So it looks like it might just be some missing data. Yep. Yeah, that can happen. Um, we, we rely on, on several different data sources for public land. Um, the easy ones, of course, are this like, you know, state national forest. Um, and in some cases we had to go and reach out directly to the county GIS departments to get some of those um, parcels that aren't as easy to find. And so it sounds like in your case, we're missing that data. Um, and if you want to send that our way, support at troutroutes.com, we'll get that up there. Um, yeah, and it is the local, the local stuff's tough. You know, we do work a lot with TU as well. There are a lot of TU easements um, around the country that don't necessarily get made public. Um, and so we, we focus on those two. We're reaching out to different TU chapters to help get those projects on the map, because not only is that great fishing access, you know, a lot of conservation dollars and a lot of hard work and a lot of sweat went into those projects. We want to make sure that you know, they're being realized. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I think we finally made it through all those questions. We appreciate all the awesome questions and all the great participation. And uh, thank you again to everybody who joined us. We had a really awesome uh, number of participants again tonight. We're super excited about this program and can't wait to bring you uh, two classes in December. So again, keep an eye out for the announcement of those classes. Um, whoa, one, one, last, one last question here. Stopping myself. Uh, we've got one user asking if uh, 3D is available on the phone. And I will say really quickly um, that we uh, don't have 3D maps available on the phone yet, but that is something we're hoping to bring to uh, the app or planning, I should say, to bring to the app uh, within Q1 of next year. So definitely uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be super exciting. It's a really great tool that, like I said, I apparently need to start using more on the desktop. So uh, when it comes to iPhone, I know I'll be using it more for sure. So. Awesome. One qu last question from Ron here too, right before we end. And then I promise we're cutting it off. This last question. Uh, any easy tips on managing downloaded maps? Uh, Ron, I know right now it's uh, kind of as you save those maps, it just kind of pours them in. That's going to be something that, again, we'll be taking a look at uh, early next year. Is some sort of uh, organization management for those being able to put them in some sort of folders, buckets, whatever that might be. Um, hopefully that's coming here soon. So we're working as hard as we can with the uh, the team we got, and we really are excited to bring you guys some new stuff here in the, uh, the next couple months that we uh, hope you guys are excited about. So thank you again for joining us, and we uh, hope you guys hit some some great water here soon or have those uh, trips planned and are tying away. So have a great night, everybody. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you.